Um, I don't think I'm going to use the microphone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. So I'm uh, Danny Helmerson. That's what I was called from birth to age 18 when I left town. And uh, I'm class of 72 from County High School. And I was born and raised in Grand Marais. And now that I think about it, I'm trying to think what, I, what, I, what I, my first memory of Fisherman's Picnic. And it had to be, we moved downtown in 1963, the summer, between third and fourth grade. Before that, I don't remember, I don't remember ever coming downtown. I don't remember downtown. So yeah, that's so 63, the 60s, definitely. Any folks here for the talk? trying to draw people in. <laughs> okay, so we'll start here. Uh, next, <laughs> 1928 was the first local fisherman's picnic before it became commercial. Uh, in the 19 and the 1920s and 30s, fishermen and their families uh, and friends gathered at various locations along the North Shore about once every summer for what we now refer to as the fisher a fisherman's picnic. The last of these gatherings that took place in Grand Marais was in 1928. Let's go to the next slide. And it had grown to include a great number of county residents. Uh, Willard Nelson remembered the last gathering in Lutzen was in 1922. And many of the fishermen and their families rowed their skiffs to the festivities. The, the highway really wasn't a highway, so to speak, in 1922. Some of the names he recalled were Holst Hansen, Siebel Rice, Steer Matheson, Victor Carlson, Carl Nelson, his father, Chris Peterson, Eric Leonard, Hans Tronis, Homer Massey, Tom Homo, Ben and Charlie Seglum. I'm sure there's many names that you all uh, recognize. The last picnic of this type occurred at Castle Bezier in 1936. So here they're lined up. This is basically, I think the angry crowd is just like here. And that's the, the north side of the harbor. And they're lined up. Yeah. So that's about 1928. Next. Uh, the first commercial fisherman's picnic that was sponsored by the businessmen here in Grand Marais County, 1938. They had a lot of water um, activities. And so this is a letter coming from the Treasury and the Coast Guard um, approving uh, a J. Henry Eliason's request uh, that the Coast Guard provide assistance uh, with the water activity. This is a program. So a, a lot of um, running. <laughs> we got women and men dashing, wheelbarrow race, three-legged race, male driving. That was popular for women. I guess that was suitable for ladies. Because my, my grandfather, when he was in college in 1915 at the U, the ladies had a nail driving team on the university level. Uh, potato race, which I guess would be a potato sack race, high eating. Tug of war is big too. That was a collegiate, um, intercollegiate uh, competition also. High eating sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Then here's all the, the, the water sports. Uh, a lot of rowing, and then a different, uh, they had different size um, boat. And yeah, here we go, uh, qualifications. Yeah. 16 feet or over in length, must be used for commercial fishing. And of course, these are all heavy wooden boats. Let's go to the next picture, you'll see. Ooh. Yeah. So um, what's interesting about this photo is, um, 
this is relatively new. This is the seawall, the stone seawall, and uh, the, the infrastructure for it, um, which was built in the 30s. So this is 1938. Next. This guy looks like he's wearing a sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, a lot of pictures of boats. Oh, this is a neat one. So, I don't know if he had to go around that. So that's a, a what do you would call it, a pylon or a expansion. Uh, that was for boats to dock to unload um, gasoline into the tanks that were behind the Standard Oil Station. So they, um, they, uh, what's the word, uh, you know, throw your rope over that thing. Dock, you know, yeah. Next. One of the ladies who's rowing, and if you notice, this is before they filled in the, the break wall. Um, originally, they built it with just these cement posts, but they filled it in within a year after this. <laughs> Here's all the ladies getting ready. And I wonder if this might be a grease pole. Because that started in the 30s. Uh, there's a nice cab cruiser. <laughs> I don't think he's in a race, he's just showing off. <laughs> oh, yeah. look at all those. Wow. Yeah, big deal. Whoa. Nice. Uh, the Hussey Shell Station, that is the Java Moose. Okay. Um, yeah. oh, um, there were dances held that uh, Saturday night at the Nightingale, which is now the Harbor Light, uh, Cascade Lodge, and then Edgewater in a top dam. There was also a street dance. Um, on the new foundation of the co-op store on First Avenue, which is the building that used to be uh, Chuck's Barbershop. So it's great, the, lake, the, the, the big lake and uh, Duffer Mercantile. Because there was a co-op there before it moved to the corner. Next. So the second, that was a big success. So the second commercial Fisherman's Picnic was 1939. They had a powwow. Um, it was uh, really quite a big deal. Now, if anybody recognizes any of these folks, uh, let me know. Because they're not identified. I recognize the hotel. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the Arrowhead Hotel, of which the building is still there. But it only has like half a, half a story. Well, it has a story, but it's sort of tight that. And so here's Highway 61, and that's the Midway gas yeah, station. Um, Chief Mike Flat, he provided the Indian powwow. We've got a lot of um, voters documenting it. Look at all the beautiful. Can you imagine this in color? All the beadwork and. Next. Next. This is interesting. I'm fascinated by these bells that are tied from one leg to another. That must be part of the atmosphere. That's part of the competition. Next. Uh, they gave away prizes. Uh, so he's got a big fish here. I think he got a prize for this big fish. He got this um, rod and reel. So he found some outboard motors. He got some old motors there. And this looks to me like Wesley Backlund. <gasps> yes. <laughs> and he would have been yes, as a teenager. Yeah, it does look like him. Yeah. That's fun. And so here he is with his pole and his fish. I don't know who he is. Uh, next. Um, so what, can you tell what she's got, what she won? 
It's fishing related. Just very small. Not big. More real? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I had to figure out what the hell it was. As if she gave it to her husband. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next. Oh, so this is great. So tug of war, you know, is a big deal. Now, it looks like they're using a double rope, which I thought was interesting. So this is the East End Fisherman versus the West End Fisherman, <laughs> which I think is very neat. And here's another shot. I maybe not see the guys on the other side. And I wonder if that is the... That nothing is a center. Next. So, this is uh, Mrs. Fred Amiot, when she was very young. Um, she uh, cooked all the fish for the filet booth, which made its debut that year. She and her husband, Fred, served 700 pounds of herring to an estimated 1,000 people. All the herring was donated uh, by local fishermen and given away free for the tourists. Now also, there was uh, fishing contests, golf and tennis tournaments, and baseball games. Ray Schobert Sr. chaired the horseshoe pitching contest, uh, looking for talent to challenge Oscar Hagberg of Rooster. Well, I looked him up, Hagberg. He was a Minnesota State or shoot, check. <laughs> so he was pretty stiff competition. Next. Um, now this looks to me like some kind of family gathering, and that looks like Delma Hedstrom, and that looks like what's Mr. Hedstrom's name? Mr. Old Man Hedstrom. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else look familiar to you? Okay. Next. Oh, so uh, then the war came and we didn't have any picnics. Next. But the fish burger stand, uh, as we sort of we know it, made its debut. Um, they call it the herring choker sandwich. And I see it there, now I see it says 25 cents. Oh, uh, God. This is a filet contest. And I know this is Ed Humphrey because he's in a lot of pictures with that hat with a button on and that's right down, um, you can see it's after the war because they still have that air power is peace power. Poster up. Next. So there's Ed. He had a clothing store. <laughs> so I guess I thought it would be fun to show off the, how great his product was. Yet another tug of war with one of his pair of fancy trousers. <laughs> Back yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, a dimple. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that he looks sort of familiar, but I don't know. <clears throat> um, fish contest. So in 1949, Howard uh, Joints came up with the slogan. I'll be back, and they, and they, uh, this one's from 1951, but they were always the same, but they had a date on, uh, you know, the, the date of the picnic and the year. They used uh, those pins until 1956. So, in 1950, I believe, these smorgy cartoon images uh, promoted the picnic. They're really, really, really something. So do you want me to read it or can you read it? Read it. The Fishman's Picnic that the city of Grand Marais is holding next Saturday and Sunday sounds interesting. I'm going to stay and see if I can find a room. 
hey, I hear that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is so you got the, the, the banner, you got Grand Race State Bay, you got Joins. Val Dahlbeck was a mayor for 17 years. Um, and he retired in 1954. Uh, so, lighthouse, light housekeeping rooms. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, what the hell is this? <laughs> I didn't see it. So, I was just passing through Grand Rapids. I noticed a sign that just picked it, Mr. Lane. Do you have to be a fisherman to attend? So, this is Lauren Lane owner of the Shore Theater. There's Ed Tofty's grocery store. <laughs> and no sporty, it's open to everyone. Well, is it a picnic? Not exactly, it's more of a celebration. Then how can we call it a fisherman's picnic? Well, we had to call it something. <laughs> 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 and we don't know about that. <laughs> There's a Coast Guard station. And the Osprey, I vaguely remember that. Next. Okay, so now Howard. Golly, there sure are lots of ships in there. Thanks for your Mr. Joins. Uh, yes, there is Smarty. Hey, Mr. Massey, what kind of ship is that? Homer Massey, who's Howard Massey's father. Um, he's from the West End, right? Yeah. Um, that's an horrible small, small, Smarty. Say, Mr. Joins, I didn't want to offend Mr. Massey, but he must think I'm awfully stupid. Why? Trying to tell me that's an horrible. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, next. Um, so what kind of boy is that in the harbor, Mr. Linquist? Uh, this is E.F. Linquist, father of Gordy and Virgil. Okay. Um, and they, he built those uh, cabins, which are called Linquist Lane, oh, up on 4th okay. Street. <coughs> Uh, a boy kind of, it's a pulpwood boat, that's their pulpwood. Gee, I don't suppose I could go fishing from a pulpwood boat. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Why, with the captain and the jack? No, but the pulpwood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and once again, there's a Coast Guard station. Uh, one more. So I assume these ran every week. Um, the North, this is Pat Dale who was the first forest uh, ranger here in Cook County. There's a forest named after him up by Two Island Lake, this is Pat Bale Forest. And he was also the sheriff. I think he was probably sheriff at this point, but later in his life. Uh, the North Shore area of Lake Superior is a good spot for vacation this morning because there are so many things to do, such as we can go lake fishing or deep sea. I say this every day. I work at the information center. Oh boy, can you help me find a vacation out of the, the site? That hasn't changed. <laughs> you can get there faster, but it's still 20 miles. <laughs> sure, how pooped out do you want to get? <laughs> and this, the banner says tomorrow and Sunday. So this must have been like on a Friday. I just think of something. I haven't looked up this Kirk Carlson, and where he gets his name, Smorty. Well, what do you think? What comes to my mind is smart as yeah. yeah. um, So in a 1950 tournament, they had midget softball at the airport <laughs> field. So you know where that is. It was in 1950. Yep, Marty's right. Where the high school is. That was a rough and tumble airport. <laughs> um, horseshoe tournament. At Seashore Park, they call it, which I think just means the waterfront. Uh, they had uh, commercial fishing demos, net setting, herring fillet contests, uh, tug of war. Um, and Bill Kruger of KDAL Radio Duluth was here both days to do the PA work and climax the picnic activities with his regular new cap newscast over the network at 10 o'clock. The Lions take over. Uh, at this point, they've been promoted by the Cook County Commercial Club and the businessmen, and now the Lions organization is sponsoring it. Um, they had a boat parade 
uh, with the Miss North Shore candidates. <laughs> I, I, I'm not quite sure who they are. He had a little accident. Oh, boy. <laughs> but they're fun. I mean, with a, you know, they really put their best foot forward here. Am I blocking you, Monty? I can see you. Okay. You've lost weight. Yeah, I have. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Oh, this is the old timers gathering. Um, and once again, I see all my heads from and her husband. Oh, yeah. And I just, oh, yeah, I can't think of his name. Nobody knows. I should have written it down. Um, so I, I split it in half just in case. You know, you can pick out anybody. He's been dead for 80 years. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, oh, this guy! It's like W.C. Fields. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it might be um, Dan Johnson, um, uh, Roy's brother. You know, the real estate guy? No. Dan, he, he owned Ogama Real Estate. I don't know, this might be him. Next. Now this. These are the uh, speed races. Look at this. That's in the 60s. Yeah. Oh, where are we now? Hold on, hold on. No, no. Wait, did I make a mistake? This is on 1954. A Ford Motor Races. No, it's not there. But they kept going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got motor. I got boat races every year. Um, this one's called the Thunderbolt. And apparently they have a little bit of a dust up on this one. Um, one nasty crash put two boats out of the race and brought the onlookers to their feet with a gasp. But there were no injuries. So, let's see, this is 1954, is that right? Oh, 53. Oh, no, wait. Were you going forward or backward or what? <laughs> <laughs> that was still 1952. <laughs> You're going back. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to 50. Close enough. Oh, 53, this is a good one. Next. This <laughs> is <Ms. Hulsberger>. a <laughs> <laughs> So this is a guy, obviously. I don't know about this. Um, I haven't seen that for a long time. <laughs> Um, and then the USS flush on the <laughs> And that's all we know about 1953. Uh, 1954, they had a kitty parade. So, it's, so I figured these kids are like around class of 67 around that period. So those sort of look like the Shoal girls. Yeah. I'm thinking. Deb and what's your name? Linda? Because mm -hmm. they're, I mean, they're like five and three or something. Yes. That's what I, I don't know who those are. <laughs> they look, sort of look like um, Johnson. Okay. Like but, but they're too, they're too uh, old to be Mark and Susan. It looks, yeah. So it's not like it's it looks like uh, Bantlet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean, um, yeah. Diana. 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 Or, uh, the, the girl or the boy? Mm -hmm. The girl. Well, that's that, that, that Sherry. No, a back one. Oh, a back one. Yeah, back one. Yeah, but I don't know the boy. No, she was she, too young. Um, what's the backlund who lives up on Devil's Track? Using your class? Oh, Barbara Backlund? No, no, no. The guy. He's married to no, Mike. Mike. Mike Backlund. Don't think it's him? Let's go to the next one. <laughs> this one I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> They're very blonde. Of course, every child is blonde in this town yeah. um, until a certain point. <laughs> So that 
1958 is a centennial year for the statehood of Minnesota. Now, these fellows, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, go to the next one. That's there. So one of those guys is Peter Rasmussen, and the other one's Chris Everson. I think the Everson's a musician, right? Because they were musical. Looks like a person. Next. Uh, another bow race. Oh, okay, here, 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 they're all like. Crash. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. They're just heading out across <laughs> the harbor. Oh, and here's that thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, see, and the boats with docks there, and there's those big tapes. And in the harbor, there's still one cement disc, and that's all that's left of that whole contraption. And, um, oh no, we missed one. There, okay, now they're on their way. Okay, next. Now, this is a historical pageant, which was a big deal up at the high school. According to what I've read, it was a professional company who did this. And I don't really recognize any of these people. So naturally, we start out with the natives, as it was all their land um, before we were a state, going back centuries. And now the Norwegians and the Swedes are oh, dropping yeah. through, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> all conjecture from these photos. Um, and they just sort of say, well, they come on in. Yes. Then, I don't know who this gal is, I assume she must be some Miss Centennial somebody or other who travels around with this troop. And why these kids are in ghost costumes and why these ghosts have bags over their heads, I have no idea. We do have a pioneer lady. Next. Now, this is Olga Soderberg, the, one of the founders of our historical society, and this, I'm sure this was all you know, under her supervision. So it looks like she's come out to take a bow, because the whole cast, look at all these people. And then Smokey the Bear shows up. <laughs> <laughs> And he's a real bear, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's crazy. Now, OK, now here's uh, Olga yeah. with our hostess. And I don't think he's a native, but he's part of the troop. Next. Then the kids do these, these dances. And these are Laura Grant kids. Uh, Next. And then the girls get a little air. Yeah, it was really quite something. Now, this is the uh, parade. This boggles my mind. So, do you see what it is, what it's representing? Bad. Yeah, bad, right. Oh, There's her wow. posters. Oh, they got the thing. There's mom just touching. Oh. <laughs> I don't know who they are. Another queen candidate. And this is a cake, I guess, to celebrate the centennial. <laughs> uh, here we are with those girls again. Oh, and um, just, I, there's no sign. So she must be a, a queen candidate. Sort of yes, mm -hmm. that is pretty racist. Yeah, yeah. Dan, go back once. Yeah. Uh, Please look in the background. All I the see those kids head. All the pulp wood yeah. up in the corner. Oh, up there. Yeah, uh -huh. you're right. And what's that? That looks like a big beer glass. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> another float in the background. Oh, I think. Okay. Yeah, I just noticed that. When you see it blown up like this. Oh, so the 60s. Okay, let's just see who here. So, this is J. Henry Eliasson. He was Hank Tofty, Ray Schoberry Sr. One of these guys is Sam Zimmerman. I think it's him. Yeah. And one of these guys is Ira Morge. And I don't know, because they, they identified five out of the six guys. 
And Heiner Mort, I think, was Karl Mort's father. Yep. So it probably would be the older guy, right? So we just don't know. Well, the older guy looks like Karl. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep, and she also has been. So Matt Johnson is the founder of Johnson's Grocery Store for our visitors. And Phil Hedstrom is one of the brothers, uh, Hedstrom brothers, and son of the illustrious father that we can't think of his name. Next. Andrew Hedstrom. There you go. Andy. Well, Andy was the son, actually. Oh. Andrew was his father. Yeah, I don't know who all these kids are, but they look like typical Cook County toe-headed views. Yeah. That's the old trading post back there. That's Wisconsin Street. Remember that big cement slab mm -hmm. that was between Bear Tree and Standard? Uh, that's Jerry Eisler. I know that. I don't know who the other folks are. That looks like Jay Henry back there. Nobody recognizes any of these people? That is George Lake. Yeah. Oh, Lauren yeah. and Earl's father. Yeah, there's And I don't know who that fellow is. Look at Java Moose. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bear tree. Bear tree park, yeah. Oh, this is a combination of the Nelsons from Lutzen and the Bensons. I know that's... What's his name? So that's Nibs, I believe. Becky, Cindy, and the twins. Maybe these are the twins and that's 